holes do you actually have out there in your greenhouse, do you know? About 1536 per greenhouse. About 50 greenhouses. <laughs> well, yeah, so it's 1536. And how many greenhouses? Three. Three. So four and a half thousand holes. And the one greenhouse gets plant, uh, harvested every week. So it's a three for week baby turnaround. Greens. Yeah. Well, six weeks. Five and a half weeks because they're in here for three weeks. I mean, in the main system. Oh, yeah, right. It's a three week yeah. turnaround. Yeah. Well, how big do you grow your lettuce heads? You don't want them big. No, because uh, the wholesaler and the, the chefs, they just keep going, oh, it's too big, it's too big, it's really? too yeah. big, you know? It's so, more tender. Yeah. yeah. So, um... Are you talking about the leaf or the whole plant? The leaf. Yeah, they look at the leaves and if they're too big, like if they get it like this and like that, they just don't, you know, just slap your hand. I'm sorry, I didn't hear, but how long do they stay in the nursery section? Uh, three weeks, because they come out, like, um, so this... That one's the oldest, and yep. then this is one week la uh, uh, later, and this is one week later. How far off are they from being transplanted? They'll go over there on Wednesday. Okay, so, yeah, that's good. And, and have you ever done a trial where you've grown one of your plants the way that you produce it here, in your system, and in straight water? No. You mean just like county water? Yeah. Because you've got a lot of nutrient material in your... Oh, episode. yeah in your actual yeah. media. So I'm just and, wondering... And that, I'm glad you brought that up because this was the reasoning behind that. Um, you know, when I learned from Tim and Suzanne, um, and, you know, it's hard to keep up with them because they're so innovative, but um, they were only using coconut, coir, and vermiculite. And that was it. And there's yeah. no nutrition. Yeah. And so you're relying on the nutrients in the fish water for, for the plant. Yeah. And um, the problem is, is that like in the beginning, I know now that they got their sprout tables covered, or at least some of them. But you know, you get a period of rainy weather, and you got sprouts in a table like this, and they're soaking wet. Um, you can't start watering them; they're already too wet, you know. Yeah. And so they're not getting any nutrition. Yeah. And um, so my idea was like get the thing covered control the water, you know, when they get their roots down to the water, they can pull nutrients from there, but until they do that, they've got some nutrition to work on. Yeah. I I'm just wondering if, you know, if they spend three weeks next door in your actual aquaponic system. I know this is aquaponic water as well, but mm -hmm. let's say that's the main growing area. I think it'd be really interesting for you to do a test where you just grow some in fresh water. Because you might find that the vast majority of their nutrition is actually coming from the media. It could be. You I mean, although the a lot of roots get huge out there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, there's a lot of things like that where after a while you just start wondering about things. Yeah. Like um, uh, in a little while we'll go out there and uh, I've mentioned the stuff I call biojuice and I'll go over how I make that. And when I first started doing it, especially like when I'm taking the coconut um, coir and I'm soaking it in the biojuice and then I'm adding worm castings and you know, um, it, all of a sudden you start going, well, do I even really, and then I'm taking the bio juice that's left over and I'm adding that to the system. So I'm going, do I really need fish? Yeah. Yeah, the, the question is, is this but, an aquaponic approach or is it just hydroponic with fish swimming around? Well, my approach, <laughs> of course, you know, when I first got introduced to this, you know, I was totally ignorant and it was like, um, Tim had a working system, and so everybody at the beginning did a cookie cutter off of his thing because, you know, shouldn't, I, I don't believe in trying to reinvent the wheel before I have any experience at all, you know, I want to try to do something that works. But as you get into it and uh, operate it more and more, um, the point that I came to is forget calling it aquaponics. You know, forget fish, forget all of these labels that um, just tend to narrow the view of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, look at the principles behind what you're doing and just try to extrapolate and use them as many different ways as you can to achieve the results and, and, the, and the goals that you're trying right. to do. You know, I mean, if a person goes, oh, no, it's going to just be fish, you know. And, you know but you know, let me tell you what we do. We don't, uh, he didn't learn this from us because we have them in a greenhouse in seedling trays. Mm -hmm. And we use inorganic fertilizer. And we just take a little, we sprinkle them once a day. Uh -huh. And they're way, 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 way denser than this. And, uh, you know, you could get by with uh, half of this space. 
and then we just pop out the little plug and put it into the net pot in the system. Uh -huh. So we don't even go through this procedure at all to try to get a, a few of the free. We use it in fertilizers uh -huh. a couple okay. times a week. Right, right. Because there's really not much. You know, they grow really rapidly. They're really healthy. Mm -hmm. They've got a nice root root mass. Yeah. On them. See, that's the other thing is that um, some people would just like be appalled at what you just said, but yeah. you know, other people are just going to go. <laughs> You're yeah, being let's a pure, try and be pragmatic about pragmatic. You're, you're being purists. And, yeah. and uh, we just do it because it just saves space and it's so easy. You go in there once a day psh, psh, yeah. and sprinkle them, that's yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, we don't worry about... Are you organically certified? No. And I probably won't be yeah. because um, I'm not really a purist. Although uh, on a practical level, I think organic is practical. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't bother me the least. Yeah. Dr. Kosi says what he's doing, that doesn't bother yeah. me at all. And you know, if that works and if he can get more yield, and it's still, you still ends up going in the system, it's still primary, the primary growth yeah, is still right. uh, healthy, yeah. you know, and it's... And the um, bottom line is if you get the production, you get yeah. the production. Yeah. Okay. And, and the nutrient <laughs> level That's in the right. food, and the end result, you know, the yeah. food, the food that you're actually producing yeah. has to have a nutrient level. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's so, so little inorganic nutrients that are used in the greenhouse operation. Mm -hmm. It's just and they yeah, have right. nice, nice metal benches and it's covered greenhouse. Yeah, so if on a practical level, if yeah. it's a minute amount, you know, why yeah. get all twisted yeah, up exactly. around it? Yeah. Um, it's not so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I'm always open to, hey, if something works better, I'm ready to consider. Yeah, and we don't, you know, the other thing about it is that we don't use as nearly as much media as you use because yeah, yeah, you're using an awful lot of media in here. We just have a Tiny little plug. It's very loose when, mm -hmm. you, get, when you set it into the neck pump. But we don't. We cut down on the medium. It's considerably. Yeah. I actually ran my commercial system completely media less. Mm -hmm. Because I used to raise my seedlings in soil plugs and then just wash all the soil off and put them straight into the system bare rooted. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the. But um, that's like we've been saying. There's plenty of ways to do it. Yeah, and I, I really want to learn as many different ways as possible because every situation is going to be unique. Yeah. And um, when, especially when you're dealing with a small amount of square footage like I'm doing, when Dr. Rikosi says uh, I would need half the space out here to do what I'm doing right now, don't think I don't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. it, it's you know I, a lot of things that he's said in the past. Uh, uh, you know, I rewatched the video that I did to him last time he was here, and um, I was surprised. Uh, I heard something for the first time. I know I had heard it back then, but he was saying that how a lot of things grew really well in the aquaponic system, but you could make about 10 times more in leafy greens. I don't know if that was yeah, the exact right. number. Yeah, yeah, the fruiting plants. Well, actually, Nick Savadoff figured that out. The fruiting plants, you make about 10 times more with leafy greens and fruiting plants. And yeah. so the next, so like when I re-watched the video that I took of you, yeah. and I heard that, it was like perfect timing because I was coming to the same conclusion, you know? Even though I had heard it, it had gone in one ear and out the other, but then I'm starting to come to the same conclusion, and then I watch, rewatch the video I did, and I'm going, yeah, and then it stuck. It looks so. fantastic. You should be very yeah. proud. You are these touching? Are these, yeah, yeah these no, those the, look great. Are you touching the water? Or you, no, no, they're not touching water. How do you? What do you do? Um, I just drop um, that cone over the stand Oh, and pipe. it just rises. Yeah, the right, water rises. Yeah, okay. like this just one once a day or so. Actually, this one is uh, whenever they need it, because okay. I don't want to water them if they're yeah. too wet.